So we're going to look at uh, Distingo uh, and how we can use it on our terrains. Uh, here I've got uh, a nice Gaia generated uh, terrain. Um, it's painted it lovely as Gaia does and you can see though with even though the Gaia has got these lovely built-in textures these, this rock texture is a great example great close-up but at a distance we get this kind of tiling effect so you, you know as you can see the pattern repeating on the on the terrain so when you, you know when you when those areas of the terrain are at a distance they don't look they don't look natural so the primary idea behind uh, Distingo was to try and reduce that that effect or to have more control over how that's how that tiling occurs in your terrain um, so with with the Gaia terrain we can simply add through um, the Gaia uh, Gaia manager through the GX through random cast Distingo and then just add to selected terrain and my Distingo scripts added to the terrain if you were using a regular unit and you're not using Gaia you can just drag and drop the Distingo script onto your terrain and it'll set it up just the same so at the moment we're just using the, the default Unity Terrain Occlusion standard PBR shader that comes with the Distingo at the moment it looks no different to the, the Unity ter uh, terrain and that's because all the default settings are uh, the same that, that ship with Unity um, so what we can do now though is to try and eliminate that tiling on that particular texture channel so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll run it in game so we can actually see it happening live so as you can see we've got this lovely terrain textures are nice close up but in the distance they're not so good I'm just going to add a little bit closer down to there so it just doesn't look very natural does it let me just uh, get my mouse back so I think it's texture channel 3 is the rocks so we've got the near UV multiplier and a far UV multiplier so the far UV multiplier is going to change how the texture is rendered uh, in the distance for the near one obviously when it's closer to the camera so if we set this to some really extreme low value so to 0.1 so that's got rid of the tiling completely I mean it doesn't look particularly natural there because we're using quite a low value but we're going to use that value just to demonstrate the the way it manages the transition from the near and far uh, UV uh, multipliers so as you can see when it's close up it's all still as it was before even close up we can alter how that looks as well just to show so we can make it more make the texture smaller effectively but obviously too small and then you're back to the tiling artifacts or we can make it quite large uh, and that can tend to get quite ugly so depending on your texture you're going to want to play around with these settings to get the, the value you, put, you want to, to look right with your terrain and your textures so let's go and now have a look at how it translates so if we if we see that we use that see that circle of rock just there we're going to try and use that as our point of reference so I'm going to head towards that circ big circle of rock and we should be able to see it subtly and gently change from that big circle of rock into a, a more finely detailed uh, version of that rock texture even though at this distance it's still quite a big rock so as you get closer to it now it's just starting to break up a little bit around the edges and now it's you can still sort of see but it's not quite there and as we get closer and closer because it's pretty much gone so that that's pretty much how we're controlling that that UV difference between uh, near and far uh, planes against the the, the, the t the textures we want to alter we can also if we want to view that we can switch the on the render cutoff and that shows you the actual uh, way it blends between the two so the the brighter the stronger the green the more of the the far UV value is used the less of the green <coughs> excuse me the more of the near UV value is used and that's just a good way to give you an indication of how that texture is going to change over distance we can increase the power of that so the more the basically the more green again <coughs> the more far UV the less I tend to have that at one 
but again it's there for flexibility you can have set that to whatever you need it to be so that's in global settings so we'll switch that off now another thing we can do is uh, let's go get close to some of this rock textures another thing we can do is um, we can give the texture we can alter the normal the power of the normal against the uh, against the texture so the normal map itself <coughs> helps the lighting figure out where the shadows on that texture so it basically gives you um, shadow artifacts against the texture based off this normal map so we can increase the power of that normal map if we want to to make that more of a striking difference you see how we've got more defined light in there against those particular sharp edges on the rock you can take this over one and it can go quite high but then you start getting stranger and stranger effects it gets darker again it's of let, let it go really high so you've got more flexibility in what you want to do if you do go too high and it's a bit too dark for you you can use the brightness setting to bring that up but uh, I, I tend to try and stay within the bounds of uh, 1 and maybe 0.5 at the most <coughs> another thing we can do with the channel is add uh, an occlusion texture uh, the Gaia terrain textures come with sort of quite a few different maps so if we apply uh, the occlusion texture now that's give it even more depth so basically the occlusion map will uh, increase the the level of detail in the in the rock terrain as well so at distance we can I guess we can really see that and again we've got a slider where we can manipulate the, the power of that occlusion so as you can see with it off with no occlusion it's kind of pasty looking but when we bring that occlusion in it gives us a nice solid definition around the edges of those uh, terrain their rock terrain artifacts we've also got a smoothness metallic as well now that those are the, those uh, two sliders are both keyed off the um, the textures alpha channel so basically you can bake the specular into the alpha channel of the texture these textures in this scene aren't particularly brilliant to show that off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that and I'm going to run us uh, a dist uh, one of the Distingo demo scenes and we can see it happening in that so we've got just a basic um, regular unity terrain there's no Gaia used in this scene so and what we've got is on my sand texture I put the metallic and the smoothness right up and as you can see we've got our sand texture now ends up being quite shiny and metallic looking um, so you can drop the smoothness down bring that back to a regular sand texture um, but we've also got as well as occlusion we've also got a, a blend mode as well so with the blend mode effectively when we've got an occlusion going as, as you can see with a warning message here if you've got um, your light map static switched on we're then using too many texture registers for unity uh, so that will that'll cause the shader to error so if you're using the occlusion mode then uh, you need to have that, that switched off so in blend mode we don't have an occlusion texture but we do have an occlusion texture for the entire terrain uh, and we can, we can apply that uh, I've not actually got one for this terrain I don't think I might have yeah, I think it's that one so that's now applying shadows based on that that map I'm sure you'll be able to create much better occlusion maps for your terrains when you come to use them uh, so uh, and we've also got a blend map as well I'll show you the blend map in a minute in another scene that I've got set up uh, so now we can we can also have a play with uh, the occlusion standard shaders as well so you've got occlusion standard occlusion standard specular blend standard blend standard specular uh, the difference between them is as I just described the occlusion textures per channel or occlusion texture for the whole thing we've also got mesh shaders as well so if you have not using a unity terrain you're using just a mesh to render as terrain then you can use these shaders as well uh, we've also got coming uh, hopefully in the next update unity terrain occlusion PBR with VT uh, VTP is uh, Vertex Tools Pro, very very 
very awesome tool um, but I'm sure the guys from VTP will do a video about that because they can give you a lot more detail and a lot more expertise on what that shade is actually doing but with them both together uh, they're, they're pretty cool actually um, so let's have a look at um, the specular the difference between the specular shaders and the standard if you'll look we've got metallic in the standard and we've got a specular value in uh, the specular shaders um, and effectively what the specular does so if I alter the specular nothing's happening and that's because it's keyed off the smoothness value so if I bring my smoothness back up again so it looks like we've got pretty wet sand so the specular is going to be the amount of um, reflection from the from the sky cube map so as you can see we get that kind of nice uh, because our sky is blue, get that nice bluish hue to it. Uh, in the forums, it was asked that the specular could be pushed over the value of one. Uh, that you, which it can do, we can go to as far as two, but you get some quite strong striking effects with that. Uh, I've disabled that in metallic, um, but it's for smoothness. You can you can bring that right up to two. Uh, and again, we've got we can apply an occlusion per. Per texture, per texture channel again with that. Uh, so let's have a look at um, the blend, the the blend shaders in another scene. So in this scene again, it's a regular terrain object. But what I've done is I've exported from Gaia the height map and splat map for that. Uh, uh, for that, actually, I've just exported that um, terrain object and then replaced the textures with my textures. Um, so we're using now we're using the uh, terrain blend standard specular in this map, but it doesn't matter which one; they're both blend blend modes. Um, so as you can see, we've got the same the same four texture channels that we normally get. But what I've done is we've now got a blend map, and we're using the occlusion map as well. But the blend map effectively. Um, right over the top of the whole of the texture. So as you can see, we've got this road kind of going around in this particular instance and again we can alter the blend power based on you know whatever you want to do with that texture again gives you lots of options um, or if you make it zero so to black because it's a multiplier against the uh, the terrain texture itself and then occlusion power again but for the whole for the whole scene rather than just that one There's not much difference on that but uh, you might find a good use for it against your um, your t your particular terrains. And again, just like all the other all the other channels, we've got specular brightness near far UVs and uh, and all the other good stuff in there as well. Um, so as I say, as well as we've got unit terrain shaders, we've also got mesh terrain shaders. So we'll uh, we'll have a quick look at those now. Let's see what they're like. So again, now we've got instead of an actual unit of terrain we've got, we're actually we're just using a mesh so this could be applied to pretty much any mesh really it doesn't have to be a flat terrain mesh uh, I've not tried it on anything other than a flat terrain mesh but you could run it on against any any geometry really um, so this one is this one is exported from Gaia and I have exported the splat map as well um, so we need the splat map obviously to tell uh, the shader where to to paint the, the textures the texture channels um, and it's pretty simple to set up so it's drag and drop onto your mesh uh, drag and drop the splat map if you've got blends and occlusions same again we've got standard occlusion standard specular specular there too again all the same settings that we've got before um, uh, same settings inside there but we've also got we can alter the base UV for each texture channel from here the reason why I don't do that in the unity shader uh, for unity terrains is because I want to leave as much uh, with the unity uh, unity uh, terrain script as possible if I start messing about with that then uh, I could get into into a bit of bother or issues get raised that aren't necessarily my issues um, there's only one area that I have put that in and that was against uh, a base map distance so you can adjust that um, so yeah, pretty much just drag and drop onto, onto your terrain. And as I say again, you've got specular occlusion standard. So there's no splat map, uh, blend and occlusion maps, but there is occlusion per, per channel. Um, so yeah, pretty much that's it, I think.
uh, I, hope you, I hope you like using uh, Distingo and uh, and you can find time to post reviews as well that would be really helpful thank you for your time